Shranijan, the man who knew infinity. Srinivasa Ramanujan was born in Arode, India. Among the five siblings, only his eldest brother lived long enough to enter adulthood, and everyone else had passed away at a very young age due to various illnesses. Srinivasa's health was also affected by smallpox when he was two years old. He recovered, but his health always remained weak ever since. At the time, India was ruled by the British, and they didn't provide good education to Indian children. All they taught were the basics and wasn't of good quality. Due to this, Ramanujan found it too boring to attend school, and he started skipping classes. One day, as usual, he had skipped school and was sitting under a tree. Suddenly, a police officer came walking towards him. He stopped and took him by the arm and started taking him along. With wide eyes, a scared little Ramanujan asked, Where are you taking me? What have I done? The police officer said, I'm putting you in jail. Why? I promise I didn't do anything wrong. Ramanujan cried. The police officer replied, You don't think skipping school is wrong? If you don't want to go to school, then let's go to jail. Hearing this, Ramanujan started crying louder. The officer looked back at the kid and felt bad for making him sob. He stopped in his tracks and tried to calm him down. Look, he said in a gentle voice, to live in this world, you must have money. If you go to school, your education will help you get a job and earn money. Ramanujan sniffled as he asked, were you going to put me in jail? The police officer laughed. No, I was taking you to school. Your mother told me to look after you. She worries that if you don't learn, you won't earn. Do you understand me, son? Ramanujan nodded innocently and realized that the man was right. From that day, he started attending school regularly, even though he found it boring. However, soon he was introduced to a subject called mathematics, and that suddenly tickled his interest in learning. Somehow he seemed to enjoy mathematics, and the concepts kept explaining themselves in his head before the teacher could even teach them. One day he got his hands on a book written by mathematician G. S. Carr called A Synopsis of Elementary Results. It was approximately a thousand pages long and contained nothing but plain theorems without any explanations. The more Ramanujan read this book, the more he understood every equation better. It was as if his brain magically knew the outcomes of every formula and equation. He secured brilliant grades in high school and got a scholarship to attend college. Here too, he excelled in mathematics and left his professors in awe of his abilities. But since he was deeply inclined to only one subject, he ended up failing in every other subject. Without a college degree, Ramanujan couldn't secure a job as well. Instead of feeling disappointed, he focused on his mathematical research and found it fulfilling. But being an independent researcher didn't earn him a wage. He started applying for jobs everywhere and soon secured a position as a clerk at the port of Madras in Tamil Nadu, earning 30 rupees per month. He found the work easy and hence finished it all quickly so that he could work on his theorems. His superiors noticed his abilities and found them so exceptional that they suggested he write letters to professors in England. Taking their advice, he drafted a letter to Professor Godfrey Hardy at Cambridge University. Upon receiving such a long letter from an Indian stranger, Hardy thought he was being fooled. But when he read the 11 pages of theorems that Ramanujan had attached with the letter, he was astonished. He immediately wrote back and invited Ramanujan to England, promising to take care of his expenses. In 1917, Ramanujan arrived in England and started his research with a team of mathematicians. His methods were different, but they realized that he was an absolute genius. When they asked him how he taught himself the subject and could create such complex equations, he said an equation for me has no meaning unless it represents a thought of God. I think of goddess Mahalakshmi and Narasimha, and then scrolls of equations just make themselves visible to me. In his short life of 32 years, Ramanujan drafted approximately three 900 theorems, and most of them were proven right. One of them was used to explain the black holes 92 years after his death, proving that Srinivasa Ramanujan was not just a gifted genius, but also way ahead of his time. 